is a laughing at you tonight. The bare truth that engages you in wonder. The thunder of your eyes that speak to me. And I listen in gratitude and delicious thoughts of solitude. I reach, I can feel you, O oh clown of the night. The dreams that open at every door, the awakening of my very soul. The birds of night that cloak your most majestic wings. I sing to you, O oh night of mine, the heart that climbs to silent set, the dreams that I could claim as mine, and still I am unwed. The light that shines through every door, the passage of your inner mind, clings to me like skin unfolded in pleasure and in truth. I have the youth inside me yet, and even though I can't forsake or forget who I am, an aged woman, time is claimed, and every page I've written is rearranged until at last I depart. My very heart tells me now that you are the one who unfolds my being, the essence of who I am, and you sing with absolute hysteric wonder, the laughter of a mad woman crying her line and speaking of her very soul. That is you, who is me, and in reality, I am no more than the tree that is emerging from the fog, the forsaken forest. I listen to the chorus of the human animal, the animal who howls of certain reality. And when she sees herself uncloaked, she speaks herself as if awoken from a dream. This is who I am, or so it seems. And that is who I am tonight. The virtue of the very being. The princess of the mistaken identity. Let's have another round of uh, applause for Karen, the young folks of Eugene, pouring their hearts out here for you. Please welcome Porcupine. Hello. McKinsey River overshouts the road passing us. And as young poets overshout that, that's a symbol in itself, isn't it? You know, it's a crazy world. Nature that overflows earth and rock and explosions is now overcome by explosions of man, building towers and symbols and ideas. And I'm proud of the people I know, because we're building our own symbols and our own towers and towering above pity and doubt and unself-awareness. It's towering above stupidity and being a little bit smarter than that. Look within ourselves, because that's tough, that's scary. It scares me. I often write about depression, about my own sadness. I have to laugh at myself because that's not all who I am. That's just my reflection. That's just what I think about. Because it's a tough world not to see the happiness in it. Because crime doesn't pay, or I used to, because there was a whole bunch of good guys fighting for it, and fighting against that, 
now it's hard to even see what a good guy is, what a good girl is, or even if there are a girl or a guy, or if they like guys or if they like girls, because it's a crazy world. We're building new towers and new ideas and new people. We're over flooding ourselves. Like the Kinsey River over floods us, over floods traffic, over floods everything. Just the sound of nature and the sound of the world bypassing us. And I have to shout over that. I have to shout over my depression, and I have to think and reflect. And even this is just pouring out of me. Boring and boring and boring, a symbol. I and mean, you can get so much out of water, out of anything, out of just ideas, if you just think about it enough. That's the one thing I don't see enough anymore. Thinking. That was Porcupine. Please welcome Andrew. All right, I have one more slightly political poem that I'm gonna throw at you. Uh, this poem is called Darwin Remove These Chains. It was written under the influence of Frederick Nietzsche and life. So. Instinct like a bowel movement must be let out, must pin the superego to get her done. This struggle brings the animal out of us. Soldiers die, casualties to Darwin's maker. There is a time for war, said the preacher. Not a time of war, a time for war. A time to purge ourselves with struggle, to find again our resilience, that we are animals deified by opposable thumbs. And Greeks, obsessed with the power-filled phallus, come to a time of testing, bursting forth life gods, the guardians of nations, the ones who make room for poets to see vulvas and roses and rock formations. Mother Nature, a cruel nun striking hands with rulers, giving tests first and then lessons. Color struggle looking over brown picket fences. The dictatorship of the proletariat come long last power. Changes hefty hands a slut for all who prove themselves worthy. Empires miscarried fall pitiful into dirty toilets and nations like yogurt seem to have an expiration date. Sinners lay down their swords for saints to take them up and slay them there. The stories of it all boil up to power. And this struggle is our salvation for when we need strength, then we become strong and wrong and right our secondary. Power is the engine that drives people like brute beasts gridlocked on tax reform, antlers locked battling for Mona Lisa, for Monica Lewinsky, driven by desire for how it must feel to be on top, like animals deified by architecture, forks and spoons and guns, rationality, language, opposable thumbs, and I bet you've never thought of how much religion deifies us. Our belief in God makes us gods as we suck the yellow blood from beneath native feet and delicately wipe our lips. As we patrol oily Middle Eastern blood, Abu Ghraib blurs lines of distinction over who the terrorists are. As we see the animal in Hiroshima and grimace and worship before what we are capable of, Instinctual self is who we minimize, preferring to be philosophers and poets, scientists and presidents, but it is pure instinctual self which keeps us alive, draws air without our notice, and makes room for prophets to see God in everything. We thinkers are indebted to the beast inside us, the beast inside others, the animals we call our mothers and fathers, they're driven to fuck. To fuck like apes fuck and lions fuck and tigers fuck. Who would have been just friends if not driven from within to fucking make us happen, bursting forth life gods who struggle every day of their life to find what star they came from, making messy bowel movements so much relief it is pleasure to let instinct 
save our necks and wipe afterwards as if we had something to do with it. And we read in the law of Moses that God is a man of war and also that we are made in God's image. Like when fighting, we reach the zenith of godhood, when my romantic self thinks just the opposite, begging for swords to be beaten into plowshares. Thank you. Right on, great sentiments there, Andrew. The young poets of Eugene, folks, how about a hand? Okay, I finally got my music to work, so I'm going to attempt something with uh, music now. Okay, I'd like to do a couple of poems from my book, Songs of Sobriety. Uh, this book is about my journey in the first 10 years of recovery. Um, I'm a recovering alcoholic and drug addict, and uh, I am now proud of that because I'm able to help by giving back to others uh, who are going through the same thing. And in the recovery process, you go through many stages, uh, emotional, mental, and physical, to try and get back to living some kind of a normal life uh, and a healthy one. Um, if you're one of the lucky ones, and I feel that I'm lucky because I survived, and I'm lucky to be here today. So. Uh, this book is about the first 10 years in the recovery journey, and here's some books, or here's some poems from Songs of Sobriety. If it works. Picture. Stuck that over. Thanks. Picture a hopeless drug addict, isolated in his loneliness, sitting in a chair, staring out his window, dreaming about a world he cannot participate in, wishing he could find a way out, crying in his lonely desperation. This is called Chair Dreams. Sitting in my chair, staring out my window, dreaming about all the things I'm going to do and see and be. You're going to love me, and it's going to be the best love ever if I could just get out of this chair and get it together. Chair dreams take me here and there. Chair dreams take me everywhere. Chair dreams seems so crystal clear for a moment, but then I'm gone again. It's just another chair. I know I was going to have a hit song in a house in the country, sit in a rocker on my front porch with endless inspiration. I know I was going to paint my masterpiece and write a prize-winning novel. And I remember it, sometimes, when I'm high enough. But I just can't seem to get out of this chair. Can't seem to get motivated to go anywhere. And my dream slips away to the back of my mind. Till another day, when the right combination finds my chair dreams. Chair dreams take me here and there. Chair dreams take me everywhere. Chair dreams seem so crystal clear for a moment. But then they're gone again. It's just another chair dream. Sitting in my chair, staring out the window. Dreaming about all the things I'm going to be. You're going to love me. It's going to be the best love ever. If I could just get out of this chair and get it together. Yes, my chair dreams take me here and there. My chair dreams 
They take me everywhere. Chair dreams. Seems so crystal clear for a moment. But then, I'm gone again. It's just another chair dream. is based on an actual event that happened to me at about six months sober and I wrote the poem right after it occurred. It's called 344. It's 344 and the dealer's knocking at my door. Go away please now and set my mind at ease. I've felt that pain many times before. I don't want to feel it anymore. So go away, please, dealer. Leave me alone. Lord, help me. Don't let me answer. I'm so vulnerable right now. I want to shut out the pain inside. And the dealer knows just how. Please, oh God, make the knock and go away. I like the way I feel life now. It's getting better day by day. I feel so alone right now. Stay by my side. That old pain came back today. I broke down and cried. Tears welled up in me. Resentments were felt. But it's still not as bad as when the dealer dealt. So help me walk through this pain once more. So I don't have to wake up with my face on the floor. It's 3.44 and the dealer's knocking at my door. Go away, please, and set my mind at ease. I don't want to score. I don't want to be sore. I don't want you no more, for sure. And it's 344. Sparkling eyes sent forth to each other for help and comfort in times of trouble. Modern miracles brought together by a common problem, bonded by a common belief. Modern miracles bringing hope through faith and spirit. Society's children shaken and stirred once bereaved, now reprieved, live and breathe, modern miracles. And finally, Songs of Sobriety, this is called Before and After. Before, it was a struggle. After, it is the cure. Before, we worked so hard for everything. After, it is so clear. I'm here, you're here, heading straight into the light. Because faith and love have graced us, made us whole again. Before, we mourned our inner children. After came the dawn. Before, it seemed there was such rage. After. It's mostly gone. We carry on in our love. Our dreams dusted off in front of us. We stand up, walk arm in arm into the sun. Woo! Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so how about some more uh, young poetry here? Who's up?
James, please welcome James. Somewhere in the down and out country of Perplexia, Animosity was training up for the big time emotional wyathlon. Trouble was the big boss. With a body that was only the ingredients you hate that get in your eye. Sorrow had to be a dark gray wind, being cold, but not like agitation. The itchy, the sweaty, the too much. Damn it, enough. It's in my eye. Stepped on another tack. Emotional physicalities competing for power. Anger and happiness were great rivals, secretly friends, and yet neither could really perceive the other. They were almost the same. Nobody had ever seen anger in the same room as happiness. Malevolence and despair spoke of their plans among the complicated beings with their free will and physical bodies. Self-pity and lust would have arm wrestled had they arms. Violence had the best time doing the worst things. And we remained bored. Violence was hitting on malevolence. Oh, malevolence, you're so pretty. Oh, it was getting pissy in there. The whole room was transforming. Teenage angst started crying and yelling, brooding off in the corner. Nobody understood. Nobody ever understood! Anger ran over and kicked teenage angst, infecting the other feelings. The body carrier had become unstable, vomiting out vile words, crying blood, and shitting out eggs. What to do, it thought. Instead, it pierced its ears, ate a bag of eyeliner, drew devil horns on its breasts, and ran into a church. Breaking windows as he ran, leaving a trail of broken glass and stubbed toes in his wake. Mania was the host of this party. This one's called Antlion Kindness. Antlion Kindness, spare us, spare us from one last awful mess that we don't care to clean up. Let the stain seep into the carpet. Let the mold eat through the floorboards. Pretend the enlightened didn't get away. Ooze your words, drip, drip, dripping, lake of fire, my desire. Hearts rushed, pumping just beneath the stingers that used to have wasps attached. The eagles with giraffe necks, abstraction, interaction, no more end days. Just the forever nights, plutonium lamps, rusty tire swings, stretchy ropes, swinging back and forth, playing forever and ever and ever, lost in the labyrinth, beyond the foreshadowing, towards the end of invisible friends and visceral pets that don't need anything more than distance. We sing for anger, for envy, for fixed intervention, exorcism, exercise, biting turtles, bouncing plumbers. Nothing but the data, the little numbers, numbering off each other, bleep, bloop, blank. Finally we respond, getting to the choking victim. They almost lived. What a relief that we stopped their savior and let them join us here in the dead world. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, wait, there's more. Oh. In the, necroco in the necropolis, suburb of the damned and disillusioned, no comments. Just a silent nod. And that was all it took this time around. A gesture for the almighty weasel that will keep snapping its curdled jaws until it's just another part of the decomposition lottery. The real end! That was the real end. How about a hand for James? Okay, so the reason, again, that I'm calling us the Young Poets of Eugene, we are a tribe. We are not all young, but we are all young at heart, with the youthful exuberance of enthusiasm and inspiration shining through in our words. We are young, we are old, we are wise, we are foolish, we are soft and fuzzy, and we are hard as nails, just like you. 
we are here to present our poetry to you, and once we do, then it becomes yours to feel and do with as you will. We are the Young Poets of Eugene. Please welcome Karen. Uh, uh, I usually don't uh, read from when I'm on the open mic. I improvise a poem. But I go share a couple that I've written recently. I, I, I'm pretty prolific. Um, the rendered clothes you wore last night. Evening lights around your waist shelter all but you who shelter you. See, I, that's why I do my improv because I have trouble reading paper. So let's see if I can do an improv. My written word is good too, but. Oh, good. Read it. Release me from this cage which I'm born and die again. Release my heart that I might feel who you are beside the door I open. The door that lies a premise to my name and everything that I have gained I have lost again. Everything that I am I find one place or another, and I do not know where I hide the corners to which I creep within. If I am just an illusion to you, if I am just a make-believe cloth doll of whatever reality you choose, that you might dress and undress me at your will, and change my hair until it is an uh, ocean of change itself and every mirror that I look at reflects the, reflects the image of who you are. So if I step aside, walk through that door, that little crack that I slip through like a mouse and heat and hunger searching for herself and finding no mate to compromise her intuition or her heart or no buddy to fill her belly that is filled with wishes and dreams and fulfilled by her own shadow. I climb there to that door on my belly. I am a soldier, so therefore I move like an inchworm through time. And every breath I take on my stubby Legs. on those legs that have no meaning except to escape a reality of which I don't understand. But you are on the other side of that door. Perhaps the kitten of my perception, the kitten who wishes to play with me, as I roll into a ball for her. And that is who you are. Yes, indeed. That playful feline of nature, that curiosity seeker, that wonderment of, of whom gods have named Felis Domesticus, and I am damned in awe of you. So I take a chance, and I do move through that door. And you swat me into reality. And I play back with you. I become that little piece of material instead of a living being. And you actually take great excitement, 
care. And perhaps the hungry look into the future of who I am. I will do that. I will do that and add some light creaks to the door to show you who I am and who you are who waits for me. I hear in the bell around your neck calling me, calling me, calling me for dinner. Yeah! Thank you, Karen. Hope you're enjoying the poetry today. Giving you a little change up from the awesome music that's out there. Uh, next up we have Austin. Please welcome Austin. Eddie? Rabbit, rabbit, white rabbit, hopping mystery flares, excreting electricity unto the blurry blare air, built up rooted raw sun anticipation as Isis's vibrato relation, through the tube amp sustained love generation on the eve of amoebic celebration, yes, yes, y'all, come one, come yod, come all, and kick back, laugh at yourself, spinning in the quandric spiral, projection on the fronds and laugh again knowing even whilst in the midst I and I above and beyond all along unto these siestas that we do that recoup those of holographic and or crystallized truths for this use mushrooms in the afternoon shan't seem reduced to merely a strange thing to do I think this and thus I gnosis Tell what I can't tell. Swig bucolic Zinfandel. And scream and shake me all about. And I'll rake for Reiki inside and out. For it is you, the low laden, love laden, passive aggressive maiden of the sunburnt pagans that we wait for. We wait for a thud, a lewd, peculiar participating of peculiar participants. They go with the motions merely quoting, Go, man, go, go, go! To what quotient of an inkling of do you ever play about thinking that it won't be straining in the last month remaining? Second to nil when knowing nothing is productive when it's entertaining. So that's why the shaking going on is shaking for you, baby. The conduit that drains holograms now ever privy to 5D comprehension, however, may procure elements of 3D sub- conscious tension. The kind that drives one to become a degenerate punk, a mortician, or a Jesuit monk. So it is of you that I hyperbolicize to the extent the remedy of thee, solipistically as such the proclivity of proclamatory soliloquies. In closing I claim before closed eyes I see you and me, baby. some sort of experimentation with a sonnet format. Sing my song if it's hard to whistle. Sometimes the tension builds, foregoing melodic frills, like rock and roll with a rusty chisel, consolidating matters with the guitar or the crystal, stillness still being heavy to instill, but no need to walk, wait, or kill. That creature speaks in epistles. Said creature of I, stewy and irate, knows now what's worth coming to think, be it to feed, fight, or fuck, even in his drunken state. Because goddammit, I love you, and I don't care if I stink. It's what's meant, it's the now intent. Why? Why not? As if there's ever such a thing as luck. Yeah. Okay, how about another hand for Austin? And please welcome to the stage, Michael. Can I be next? Can I be next?
Dog dazed of summertime blues. Don't believe the news lies in the bed we make. Forsake Dharma lost for the fascination of tribulation. Dog dazed, crazed, sun blaze, lust raised, loins are on fire, hired guns for fun. Run, son, from your mother's earth motion of oceans raising to swallow the cities. Dog dazed, Dogwood blooming in forests, blooming in primordial memory, in atomic memory, in ancient memories, in our memories. Dog dazed and confused by the illusion of concepts realized by lies, surprised, left to their own demise. The fear is near to feeling, reeling, its web, the spider said to the fly. Dog days of war and peace, release the hounds of hell. The well of truth dried up and only us to save ourselves, to save ourselves. Dog days of summer, our chance is now, not then, not tomorrow, now, this day on a dog day afternoon. Yeah. Thank you so much, Michael. Another round for Michael. Okay, so the thing is, we're supposed to be playing in between the sets of this band. It sounds like they're trying to start a little early, but I think we have a little, a little bit of time left, so Porcupine's next, and then Frog's gonna do one. If you guys don't mind, you know, yeah. doing it with the band going, if they start up, you're just gonna be extra noise, that's all. People wandering by, as we all wander, as I think we all wander at least, I beg you to stop and listen, pay attention, as I try and pay attention to life. Because it's important, like, just as much as you're important. And I can't ask anything of you. I can't ask that of you, so I just say it now, hoping that you vaguely hear it, subconsciously put it into your head. Because you're important just as much as my own desires and needs and intents. I mean, you want to wander this place, find something nice to buy, maybe some food, listen to some music, and it'll be fun. It'll be fun for all of us. But this is, in some way, a little bit more important. It's poetry. It's in depth. It's, it's the reason why, you know, poetry isn't heard. It's written, and it's spoken, and it's understood the reason why we're so underground because a lot of people deal with hard problems and they deal with something more important than themselves and it's that feeling that we get and that's why we do this, this is why we're here and I ask of you to consider that and to consider something beyond yourself and, and to donate, to donate your time or just witness or just, hell, a quarter would be nice. Thank you, Porcupine. Okay, please welcome Frog for an impromptu reading. Cat throats really stink, even if the cat is wearing pink. And if the cat is wearing gray, that false stink will blow you away. A cat in black can give you a heart attack. A cat in red can middle noodle that will spin your head. A cat in blue can make a poo that leaves you not knowing what to do. A cat in green can smell so bad you'll want to scream. A cat in brown can blast one off. You can smell across town. Cat parts are the worst. Thank you. Thank you, Frog. Okay, so let's see. I think we got a couple minutes left, it looks like. Andrew, you want to do another one? Come on up. Alright, this poem is a little long, we'll see if we can make it fit in the time. Uh, this is a, a quasi-biblical tale. 
entitled Cain's rendition of early Genesis after killing his brother Abel. After the killing of my brother spilling the first bleeding glistening morbidity, I wrote this poetry and rehearsed it in my mind saying, if perchance the gods and goddesses are forgiving, then I may well go living, sinning, and rebutting against their dictates, performing blasphemies prostrate to create a clean slate, giving deity opportunity to show mercy at indignity, if it is indeed indignity to uh, glory in processions of disobedience reckoning myself a human in the likeness of a god naming man adam who eating from forbidden fruity realization suddenly awakened with eyes wide open that hence were yet unopened blind to thinking like the gods that he was worshiping the serpent was not lying when it said that god was lying that disobeying shall not produce dying this day but you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil, discriminating between dichotomies, hence unknown prime evil, the umbilical cord between divine and us unbroken in biblical narration, from creation to fall to eschaton to new creation, when all becomes the one and one becomes the all, but in the drama in between it is only rational for mind to ask what is missing that this fruit I should not grasp and clasp and fill my senses with the fragrance of its sweetest musk crossing this line fashioned by the gods to see how much can be known by forsaking duties to authorities so he did not die that day but went to surviving as the mythos unfolds for some 900 years I'm told and I have not fallen prey to the lightning strike of holy deity enraged in his plight to fight against an uncouth soul unmoved by threats or pretense for control by governors or provinces I happen to be in and customs that define the canon of appropriate lives to live Mary on my way I do what gets called righteousness and do what gets called sin finding each an occasion for oblation and wallowing in this new gnosis oasis boldly elevating my prognosis I stand at the vantage of Mount Olympus and Mount Sinai observing the arguing and petty fighting over which humans deserve to live and which deserve to die well fickle this cartoon of creators to make this potential and forbid the actual why not think twice about the seditious tree sitting there alongside the tree of life to be wondered at every day as the couple sits and eats from subservience the curiosity for indolence grows right next to them and why make a wily creature as that serpent to feature questions god did not or cannot answer so eloquently if not to say that the desire of the gods that we should heed them is illusory it is the trinity beckoning with every beck and call for following the status quo to come join the family by saying no my will be done you archaic bloodlust driven chauvinistic brethren if you wanted my compliance why concoct reverse psychology why tighten the chains and give me the ability to break them and take the reins to govern my soul if you reign a sovereign to feign praise and not disdain to forevermore or set a door before me that states, do not open when I know what lies on the other side is also your creation. If you are the painters and I am the painted, I'm just learning and expanding on the canvas of colors you have tainted. You painted a whole world outside of Eden and as nice as Eden is, the deserts unconfined are nicer. Innocence, unexamined ignorance, petty and unworthy of nostalgia when departing from the pack with this mark on my head and a pack on my back dubbed a nomad to explore the land god said for pr purposes he put it there to curse me 
but whispered in my ear what he had made me. A wizard like Harry Potter and Voldemort, superseding Adam, superseding Adam now. This is a reward. Now go learn my craft. Make something to shaft all my angels and demons and people in astonishment at what can be done when freedom is won. So son, have fun. But don't tell everyone about this freedom or you won't be so free yourself. We need sheep to bat idly to accommodate those who see no need for sacrifice. But place each choice on the altar, burning incense to the nostrils of a god intense, hiding his intents in facades of diversions masquerading as commandments. Each statement not to partake a whisper from the Holy Spirit. Your will be done, second to none. You were made to create, not follow, dictate. So do what you will and locate your fill in the heart of your kill, forsaking the till of labor so dull till I come in the clouds and give you your fill. Forgiving you would only add insult to injury to imply my purposes were thwarted by your liberty. Remember, Whatever you contribute, at least make a good story to have a Bible written around it or something. Indeed, if we wanted you to behave slavishly, why would we concoct reverse psychology? Thank you. The young poets of Eugene. What do you think, folks? Have a, an audience member who said he'd like to come up and just read something real quick. So we're gonna let him do it. Come on up. Come on. What's your name, sir? Baham. From the ports that you know all W ports. Beneath the rain of drums, black flute stuck, grew, withered, and sprouted again. Things cast off from their name, and I float at my body's edge, among unbound elements, liberty. Sides of a mirror, 
mirror that show my stress, stressing the point, point break. Breaking the silence, silent flicker of light, lighting the cigarettes. Cigarettes I need, need to escape, escape the conflict, the conflict of self. Please join us for our next set at 7 o'clock when this band is done. If they 